profitable medicine for making the mind humble. Know, oh dear readers, that a believer will declare God's glory and fear Him and hope in Him and be ashamed to Him for his sins. After his faith, a believer will not be free from these conditions. Although the strength of the mind will be according to the strength of his faith, yet there is no other case except following ones for the absence of his mind, random thoughts, heedlessness, absence of mind in muzazat, and absent-mindedness in prayer. This heedlessness in prayer arises out of engagements of the minds in various thoughts. The medicine of keeping the mind present is to remove all the thoughts and primarily to remove the roots of these thoughts. There are two bases for this root and the external root. The external root. Thought catches what the eye hears and the eye sees and the mind turns towards that thought. This causes to produce other thoughts. So the root of this thought is I and then the root of one thought is another thought. He whose knee is fine and aim high cannot be diverted by what occurs in his organs or his limbs, but he is weak and falls praise to these things. Its medicine is to cut off the roots and to shut the eyes, to pray in a dark room, not to keep anything in front which may attract attention, and not to pray in decorated place or painted praying cloth. For this reason, the sages used to do divine service in the dark, narrow and unspacious rooms. Internal Root Internal Root is very difficult. The thoughts of worldly matters are not confined to one subject. It goes from one thought to another. If they shut their eyes, it does not do them any benefit. The way to remove them is to take one's mind to understand what is recited in the prayer and to stick to it after giving up all the other thoughts. The prophets once told Usman bin Ali Shaiba, I forgot to tell you that to cover the screens of vegetated colors in the room because they should remain nothing in the room which can divert attention from the prayer. If the rise of the thoughts is not stopped by this method, then there is another easy one to prevent it. This is to cut off the root cause of the disease. It has been narrated that Abu Zaham presented a valuable dress of different colors to the Prophet. He put it on and said the prayer. Afterwards, he took it off and said, Take it to Abu Zaham as it diverted my attention from the prayer. The Prophet had a ring of gold in his hand before it was unlawful. He threw it away when he, saw, he was on the pulpit and said, My sight has fallen on it. It is said that Hazrat Abu Talha once prayed in his own garden which pleased him so much that he forgot how many rakat he had prayed. He mentioned it to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of God, I wish to gift this garden. The Prophet said, Give it to whom you like. Once a man was praying in his garden in which dates were hanging. It pleased him so much that he forgot how many rakat he had play, prayed. He mentioned it to Hazrat Usman who said, Spend it in the way of God. Hazrat Usman purchased it for 50,000 coins, thus they would cut off the root of their thoughts and expiated the loss in prayers. This is the medicine for cutting the root of the disease of the mind. To bring sexual passion under temporary control is not so benefiting. Its root cause is to cut off everything that baffles the whole prayer. The following illustration is given. In a certain tree, numerous sparrows used to make tremendous noise as they had their nests in the tree. A traveler began to drive them away, being disgusted by this noise. They fled away for the time being, but once again came back and started to make a great noise. If he wants to himself be relieved of this noise permanently, he should cut the tree. The sparrows will make noise till the tree lasts. Similarly, the attachment to a thing may temporarily be removed from the mind, but it will come again and disturb the mind. Attachment to the world is the root of all thoughts, the primary cause of all losses. If one wants a peaceful mind in prayer, he should cut off his attachments to the world. If one is engaged in worldly matters, he should not expect to get taste in invocations of God. Meaning of different items of the prayer azan. 
When you hear the call to prayer, think of the general call on the day of resurrection and look to your external and internal matters when replying and making haste. Those who respond in haste to this call will get a reply with the mercy on that fearful day. So keep your mind on the azan, meaning, meaning of cleanliness. When you make your praying cloth pure and clean your body of impurities, don't be indifferent to make your mind pure. Make it pure of impure thoughts and thoughts as far as possible. Repent for what you have failed to do and determine not to do it in the future. So make your heart pure as it is the object of sight of your Lord. Meaning of covering the private parts. The meaning of covering the private parts is to cover your private parts from the sight of men. God looks to your heart. So cover the faults of your heart and know that it is not a secret from the sight of God. Your repentance, shame and fear will expiate it. Stand before God just like a fugitive slave who returned to his master being repentant with the humility of spirit and bend your head down. Meaning of facing the Kaaba The meaning of turning your face towards the Kaaba is to turn your mind towards God after taking it off from all directions and all evil thoughts. Move the external organs to move your secret mind and keep them under control of the mind. Keep the face of your mind towards God only with the face of your body. The Prophet said, when a man stands in prayer and directs his hope, face and mind towards God, he comes out of his prayer as on the day his mother gave birth to him. Meaning of standing in prayer. Its external meaning is to stand before God with body and mind. You shall bend down your head which is higher than your other limbs. The meaning of this bending down of your head is to bend down your mind free from all self-conceit and pride. Know that you are standing before the mightiest, greatest emperor. You fear the king, but you don't fear God, although he is fit to be feared the most. For this reason, Hazrat Abu Bakr asked the Prophet, how should we be shameful to God? He said, you should be shameful to God just as you are shameful to see the most God-fearing man amongst you. Meaning of Niyat Promise firmly that you will respond to God's order through prayer. Make it perfect and make Niyat sincerely for God and keep an eye with whom you are speaking secretly, how you talk and for what matter. At this time, you sh your head should perspire, your limbs should tremble and the color of your face should be changed. The meaning of takbir. When your tongue utters a takbir, let not your mind speak falsehood. Your mind should correspond with your tongue in declaring God to be the greatest. If you have got in mind something which is greater than God, God will attest you as a liar. Meaning of open do, opening do's. I turn my face towards the creator of the heavens and the earth. I, to turn face towards the Kaaba means to turn it towards God. God exists everywhere and so to turn towards the Kaaba means to turn towards the only subject of your life, towards the Almighty after giving up all things in your life. When you recite, I am not a polytheist, your mind harbors then secret shirk as God says, if anybody wishes to meet with his Lord, let him do good deeds and do not set up any partners in his divine service. It was revealed with respect to a person who wants divine service and also the praise of men in this world. So take care of this shirk when you utter, my life and my death are for God. Know that this condition is that of a slave who safeguards the existence of his master in lieu of his existence. When you utter, I seek refuge in God, you should give up your low desires and temptations. You should then take a firm resolution to take refuge to the fort of God, giving up the fort of the devil. The prophet said, God said, there is no deity, but God is my fort. He who enters my fort is safe from my protection, from my punishment. God protects one who has got no deity but God. He who takes his low desires as his God lives in front of the devil, lives in the fort of the devil and not in the fort of God. Meaning of Quran reading. 
Regarding this matter, men are of three classes. 1. He who moves his tongue but his mind is heedless. 2. He who moves his tongue and his mind follows his tongue. This is the rank of the fortunate. 3. He whose tongue is directed first towards understanding the meaning and then his mind takes his tongue as his servant. Tongue will give expression of the mind. Meaning of other things. When you utter, I begin in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Seek first the favor of God. When you say, you are the Lord of Judgment Day, understand that there is no sovereignty except God's sovereignty on the Day of Judgment and fear His judgment. Express your helplessness by saying, you do we worship and understand that religious acts do not make easy except with God's assistance. It is said that when Zarra bin Auf finished reciting, when the trumpet will be blown, he fell down senseless and died. When Ibrahim Nahi heard the verse, when the skies will rent Asanda, he began to shake tremendously. So read the Quran slowly and attentively so that it becomes easy to understand. The Prophet said, God remains with the praying man till he does not look to and fro. So, it is your duty to protect your head and your eyes. So, it is compulsory on you to restrain your mind in prayer from the thoughts other than that of God. When you look towards any other thing, remember that God sees your condition. If you are absent-minded at the time of Munazat, it is very bad. Keep the fear of God within your mind. Hazrat Abu Bakr used to stand in prayer just like a statue. Some used to remain in Ruku like motionless stones. So much so that the birds would sit on their heads. The Prophet said, Pray as it is your last prayer and your fa farewell prayer, having in mind fear and shame owing to the defects in your prayer and fear that your prayer may not be accepted and that it may be thrown on your face with your express and secret sins. There is a hadith that when a man stands in prayer, God lifts up the screens between him and his servant and faces him. The angels climb upon his two shoulders and pray in horizon along with him and say Amin along with his invocations. They spread virtues over the scalp of his head from above the horizon. A proclaimer proclaims if this invoker had known to whom he is invoking, he would not have looked to and fro. The doors of the heavens are opened up for a praying man and God takes pride before his angels for the praying man. So the doors of the heaven are opened up for this man and the face of God comes before his face. In other words, his kash is opened. There is written in the Torah, O son of Adam, don't be baffled to stand before me in prayer in weeping state because then I come near your mind and you also see my light unseen. He said the softness weeping and victory which a praying man feels in his mind be seek of the advent of God in his mind when God's nearness is not the nearness of space there is no meaning of it except the nearness of mercy guidance and removal of ills God says those believers got salvation who fear God in their prayer then he prays them with the specialty of the prayer it is connected with God-fear. Then he described the qualities of those who got salvation through prayer as God says, those who guard their prayers. Then God says, they will inherit, it, inherit the gardens of paradise. They will abide therein. If tongue is moved with inattention, can this reward ever be achieved? The praying one will inherit the gardens. They will directly see divine light and they will enjoy the happiness of nearness. Stories of the Prayers of God-Fearing Men Know, oh dear readers, that God-fear is the result of real faith and belief. He who has keen given it, fears God in and out of prayer. When he remains alone and when the time of the calls of the nature, because he who fears God knows it well that he knows the condition of mind and his sins and faults. Fear grows in the mind of one who knows this and it is not limited only in prayer. It is narrated that a sage 
did not raise up his head for forty years, being ashamed and fearful of God, the saint Rabbi Achasim used to close up his eyes so tightly that people used to think that he was blind. He used to go to the house of Ibn Mas'ud for twenty years. Whenever his female slave saw him, she used to say to her master, Your blind friend has come. At this, Hazrat Ibn Mas'ud used to laugh. Whenever he used to knock at the door, the female slave would come to him and see him with eyes closed. Hazrat Ibn Mas'ud told him, Give good news to those who are humble by God. Had the Prophet seen you, he would have surely been pleased with you. One day he went to Ibn Mas'ud to the shop of a blacksmith. When he saw him blowing and fire coming out, he at once fell down senseless. Ibn Mas'ud sat near his head up to the prayer time, but still he did not regain his senses. Then he bore him to the house and he did not recover his senses till the prayer for five times passed away. Ibn Mas'ud sat by his head and said, By God, this is the real fear of God. The saint Ruby said, I did not observe such prayers in which I had other things in my mind except what I uttered and what was said to me. Hazrat Amir bin Abdullah feared God in prayer very much. When he prayed, his daughter beat drums and the women of the household held conversations, but he did not hear them. One day he was told, Does your mind think of any other thing in prayer? He said, Yes, it thinks about its stay before God and going from this world into another world. He was told, Do you see what we generally see about the affairs of the world? He said, I consider it better that my teeth should go from one side to another than what you see. This is not my attention in prayer. Musallim bin Yasir was one of them. It is said that while he was one day praying within a mosque, one of the corners of the mosque fell down and he did not come to know of it. The limb of a certain pious man was damaged and it required operation, but it was not at all possible. Some said when he prays, he will not be able to feel its pangs. According to, accordingly, the limb was operated while he was engaged in prayer. Some said prayer belongs to the next world. When you enter prayer, you go out of this world. Hazrat Abu Darda said, It is the rule of religion that when a man goes to pray, he should perform all of his necessary things so that his mind becomes free from thoughts. The Prophet said, the prayer of a man is not written except its one-third, half, one-fourth, one-fifth, one-sixth, or one-tenth. He said, What is said in prayer with understanding is only written down for him. Hazrat Umar once said from the pulpit, The head of two sides of a man become grey, yet he does not observe prayer for the pleasure of God. He was asked, How does it occur? He said, His God fear, modesty, and his self surrender for God does not become perfect. Abid Yahya was once asked, What is the meaning of heedlessness in prayer? He said, One who commits mistakes in his prayers and does not know how many rakat he has prayed. The sage Hassan al Basri said in his explanation, He forgets the time of prayer. Jesus Christ said, God says, my servant gets salvation by observing compulsory duties, but he gains my nearness by doing optional duties. The Prophet said, God says, My servant will not get salvation till he fulfills the compulsory duties. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.